Hey everyone! So in the previous video, we were talking about the formula for IUPAC nomenclature. We knew there were some rules for naming organic compounds and the first one was finding the longest chain. We used to find the longest carbon chain that was the unbranched chain and then we would number it. We would number it from the side which had the closest branches. Branches could be one carbon branch like methyl or a two carbon branch like the ethyl. Since we already are accustomed to writing of the skeletal formula, we used both skeletal and the structural formula to practice some naming. We even wrote some naming with one branches, even two branches or perhaps branches which included both methyl and ethyl. In today's video, we'll continue with our next rules which include alkene and alkyne namings. So our next rule, which would be rule number five, it is if a carbon-carbon double bond or carbon-carbon triple bond is present, if our alkene has a carbon-carbon double bond or a carbon-carbon triple bond, we number it, we number the longest chain basically, we number the longest chain from the carbon towards the double or triple bond. So we would pick the corner which is closer to the double or the triple bond. For example, look at the structure below. It has a longest chain of almost six carbons. Oh, sorry five carbons and you can see there's a double bond we could number it from left or right let's try both and let's figure out which would be appropriate numbering pattern from left it would be one two three four five and from right it would be one two three four five you can see that using the blue numbering the carbon carbon double bond is getting a smaller number but numbering it from the red side, or you can say the right side, the carbon-carbon double bond is getting bigger number. So the numbering should be taken from the left-hand side, and we would number it in a way that carbon-carbon double bond gets smaller number. So the final name is going to be, let me write the number. Yeah, the final name is going to be Pent. And it's obviously a pentene. There's no doubt in that because there's a carbon-carbon double bond. But we would number before calling it ene. So we won't call it pentene. We would rather call it pent to ene. The number two means carbon-carbon double bond. Carbon-carbon double bond starts at position two. Starts at position number two. You don't have to mention two, three, both, because it would be obvious that if the carbon-carbon double bond is starting on two, it would be between two and three, obviously. Now let's go for this other numbering. This other structure is again a six carbon structure, but you can see there's a double bond in the center. So it really doesn't matter whether you number it from the left or right. Just for the sake of simplicity, I'm numbering it from the left. One, two, three, four five six there is a branch on carbon number two and there's a branch of methyl another branch on carbon number five so the name should include the name of branches first so you will call it two five dimethyl and then you would call it hexene but don't forget to number the ene by calling it hex three ene the three means the carbon-carbon double bond begins on carbon 3. So the 3 means position of alkene functional group. Position of the alkene group. Let's go for one more example. We can see there are double bonds on carbon position like on the towards the left and towards the right. And they're both towards the corner, so it really doesn't matter whether you number it from the left or the right. Because there's a double bond on the left corner, there's a double bond on the right corner. So here, I'm numbering it again from the left. 
because there is no um, harm in numbering from the left because there are double bonds on both corners so three four five you can see there's a methyl one carbon branch on carbon number three so the name is going to include methyl first so we will call it three methyl three methyl and then you would want to call it pentene but don't forget to notice there are two alkene groups and in such a case you will call it diene it's not ene anymore it's diene di means two carbon carbon double bonds so it won't be pentene it would be called pent and then you would number so number is carbon one because the double bond starts on carbon one and another one starts on carbon four so you will call it pent one four diene one four means there are two double bonds the first one starting on carbon position one and the second double bond starts on position number four let's try this another example where I have got two different functional groups one is alkene one other, another is alkyne you can see that the carbon carbon double bond is on the left corner so it would be appropriate to number it from the left side so that the carbon carbon double bond gets a smaller position number so one two three four then there's a five then six and seven it's a heptene or heptyene heptene because it's alkene functional group heptyene because it's alkyne functional group so ene is called carbon number one and there is a carbon four position where alkyne functional group is there alkynes mean carbon carbon triple bond alkyne means carbon carbon triple bond we don't have a branch here so we will call it hept you will mention the ene first with its position so you will call it hept one ene and then you will call it four ene the ene because there is a carbon carbon double bond on position number one and four ene because there is a carbon carbon triple bond on position number four so hept one ene four ene ene comes first ene comes later let's take one more example in this particular case you can see again a carbon carbon double bond and a carbon carbon triple bond both are towards the left side so again numbering towards the left one two three four five six and there's a methyl branch on carbon number five the numbering should be focused on carbon double bond and triple bond rather than the methyl even if the methyl gets like bigger number that's okay it's just a branch it's not an important functional group so you will mention the methyl first you will get done with the methyl because it's just a branch it's not our main family name so you get done with the branches first you call it 5 methyl don't forget to notice there is one ene because there is a double bond on carbon number one and there is three ene because there's a carbon carbon triple bond on position three so you will call it five methyl hex because it's a total chain of six carbons hex one ene three ene so five methyl hex one ene three ene this is how we number the compounds with chains carbon carbon double bonds and carbon carbon triple bonds let's come back and explore the naming rule number six which is gonna be nomenclature with functional groups nomenclature with functional groups now what is a functional group a functional group a functional group is an atom meaning it could be a single atom or a group of atoms which means it could be multiple atoms so it's an atom or a group of atoms 
that affect the properties that affect the properties of the organic compound I don't know why I wrote the the like this but it affects the properties of the organic compound what are some examples of functional groups so the first example is a carbon chain let's pick a simple carbon chain and I will keep a copy of it to have you with an example of like multiple functional groups let's copy this structure the first functional group is halogen for example chlorine or bromine or iodine so these are common functional groups I'm attaching the other bonds with hydrogens so the first functional group could be chlorine or perhaps bromine or even it could be iodine these atoms are halogens so they would be called halogenoalkanes you will call them halogenoalkanes this is our first functional group the second functional group is alcohol so you can have a carbon chain with the hydroxyl functional group hydroxyl functional group means OH and obviously the other bonds are just hydrogens so this is our hydroxyl functional group and that means alcohol their name ends with OL alcohol a very unique functional group is carboxylic acids so carboxylic acids have a bigger functional group which looks like this OH on one side and carbon double bonded oxygen on the other side that is a carboxylic acid functional group their name ends with oic acid OIC acid we will have some examples of these also so oic acid let's keep our naming simple and let's practice some structures with halogens alcohol or carboxylic acids for example let's copy the first structure that we used as an example let's make it a little more complicated this time I'm taking a total of four carbons and obviously one of them is going to be a halogen so this is our longest chain obviously bromine is not a part of the carbon chain you number it towards the functional group so one two three four we number it from the right because the functional group is present on the right this is our functional group let me pick a better highlighter yes you will call it one bromo butane the one means the position of the halogen functional group bromo is because a bromine atom is there and butane because it's a four carbon chain let's have one more example I'm making a vertical chain because we know that these chains can exist in any shape second carbon let's call it the third carbon you can see a branch being made over here then you can see let's suppose a chloro here and the others are hydrogens our main chain is vertical you can see there's a functional group with chloro and there's a methyl chain also we number it from the corner of functional group so one two three four a methyl group is attached on carbon number two a chloro is attached on carbon number one so you will f find that whether you should talk about the chloro first or the methyl first in this way you name them alphabetically so you name the substitutes 
you name the substitutes alphabetically it becomes one chloro because there's a chloro group on carbon one then two methyl one chloro two methyl and then you call it butane because it's a four carbon chain one chloro two methyl butane one chloro comes first because the chloro part or the functional groups initials start alphabetically like they come before M which was for methyl let's take one more example this time with alcohol functional group I am drawing the displayed formula so you can appreciate how the structure is drawn this is the displayed formula of a common alcohol with four carbons you can see the alcohol functional group is here towards the left side so we number it from the left one two third carbon fourth carbon so you will call it butanol but you won't just call it butanol because you remember the position is really important so it's not not butanol rather you will call it butin the number which is two because the position of butanol is two and then all the two signifies the position of the alcohol functional group position of the hydroxyl functional group carboxylic acids are always on the corner so we don't write their position number let me give you an example imagine a five carbon chain you have a carboxylic acid towards the right side there's a methyl chain on one of the carbons like this and obviously the other ones are hydrogens so when you pick the longest chain you obviously consider one of them as a branch let me show you how this is our longest chain with all the important carbons and this is our methyl functional group you should number it from the functional group which is towards the left this is your functional group on the left so I number it from the left carbon 1 2 3 4 and 5 there's a methyl on carbon fa carbon 4 rather so we will talk about the methyl first you will say it is 5 methyl and once you are done with the substitute which is the methyl there is no chloro there is no bromo there is nothing else so you will directly come to the homologous series name you will come to the main name you will come to the name of the chain which is pentanoic acid pentanoic acid pentanoic acid because it's a 5 carbon acid so 5 methyl pentanoic acid this is how you number and also mention the functional groups in a systematic manner in the next video we'll try more examples and we'll try to mix and match multiple functional groups within the same molecule so we can have more higher order practice stay tuned guys thanks